In the early hours of Wednesday morning, on the 30th of October, a new spacecraft, the Soyuz TMA-1, waited on a launch pad in Baikonur, ready to take a three-person crew to the International Space Station. During the hours leading up to launch, the crew, comprising of ESA astronaut Frank Davina, mission commander Sergei Zalutin, and flight engineer Yuri Lonchkov, underwent final launch preparations. Belgian astronaut Frank de Vinner spoke of his upcoming mission, during which he became the first Belgian to visit the International Space Station and the first ESA astronaut to work in both the Russian and American modules. I hope that we can really do a good uh, scientific program that can be beneficial for a lot of Belgians later on and for a lot of people in the world. The crew gave a final wave before entering the Soyuz spacecraft at the start of their 11-day mission, named Odyssea after the ancient adventurer Odysseus. Despite poor weather conditions, the Soyuz launched successfully at 0411 GMT, witnessed by a crowd of spectators. During the early hours of the 1st of November, the new Soyuz TMA began its automated docking procedure with the International Space Station. The TMA-1 is an updated version of the TM-34 Soyuz, one of which was waiting to take the crew home at the end of their mission. Following a faultless docking, the crew ingressed the station and were greeted by the resident Expedition 5 crew. There was then time for in-flight calls with Belgian ministers, ESA VIPs, and even Frank de Vinna's family and friends at the Mission Control Center in Moscow. Over the next eight days on board the station, de Vinna carried out his intensive scientific program. The subjects of the experiments were varied encompassing both physical and life sciences, but all with the ultimate aim of enhancing life on Earth. Okay, and the nose still goes up. Let's do it one more time. And the nose still goes up. So, we can see here the effect of microgravity. Four of the physical science experiments were carried out in the ESA-built microgravity science glove box which provides an enclosed and sealed working environment for safe experimentation on board the station. Have you decided now what to go do with this experiment? Or, uh... Well, I, uh, I did. It's kind of sister experiment with uh, 
also in glass ampules, and it worked just fine. Despite his busy work schedule, Davina was able to take time out in order to tell people back home about his experiences in space. In-flight calls, such as this one to his hometown in St. Trouden, helped raise the Belgian astronaut spirits during his time on the ISS. Finally, after eight days on board the ISS, the Odyssea crew undocked the TM-34 Soyuz. Separation. Thereby completing the principal role of the mission, the biannual replacement of these so-called lifeboats for the station's resident crews. The Soyuz touched down on the steps of Kazakhstan during a rare night landing, which was described by a still visibly emotional Frank Davina. The landing was very per, uh, spectacular. It was a night landing. So when we entered the atmosphere, we entered the plasma. It was uh, all right around uh, the vehicle. Uh, then we saw all the, the small itensel from the, the vehicle, the sparks coming from the vehicle. It was uh, very beautiful. Uh, and this was the beautiful part. After that, we went through the transonic part, a little bit of vibrations. But then when the parachute opened itself, it was really incredible. All the movements, uh, I had the impression that the capsule was going anywhere. Uh, I looked to my commander to, to the right and he said, no, uh, you can be, it's, it's okay, it's normal uh, like this because of course he has already some uh, experience in this. And then the landing itself, we didn't see it. We see the, the ground arrive, so it was very sudden. We jumped, we turned a couple of times, uh, and then we, we ended up on, on the side. Following landing, the crew were quickly brought out of the Soyuz capsule, and accompanied by Prince Philippe of Belgium, Frank de Vinner was taken to Star City for the traditional Russian landing ceremonies. <laughs> Thus, another successful mission of an ESA astronaut to the International Space Station came to an end and provides further evidence of the strengthening cooperation between Europe and Russia.